There is magic in the air regarding the Chicago Cubs team. We keep enjoying it right now. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Please support the show by following on your preferred audio platform, and you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into discussion with you on all things Cubs. Today's episode, we are going to discuss the magic surrounding this Cubs season and preview Cubs Royals before I make an announcement about my future on this program. And today's episode is presented by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper picks and you can win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. The Cubs were 26 and 36 on June 9th. They were 43 and 50 on July 18th. Now they are 62 and 58 in the third wild card spot and within two and a half games back, of first place in the NL Central. Sam, the turnaround this year has been nothing short of impressive, and I, I've really enjoyed it. Matt, if I were to ask you, uh, just 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 because because this is kind of a, a casual show, we don't have something specific. Uh, not to put you on the spot, I'll do it with you. If you had to pick the top five guys most responsible for that turnaround since June 9th, just off the top of our heads, I I just I was thinking about that as I was uh, getting ready for this show, and you know, it's obviously Bellinger's one. He's the top have, one. And we don't even have to do an order. We could just name five. After, after Bellinger, it's like it's such a handful of guys. I think Talkman has to be in there. It's like, d- does Dansby and Nico make it? Well, Dansby was out for a while since right when he came back is when it started to really turn. Steele has been pretty much consistent the whole year. I'm getting to a point here, by the way. Um you know, Morell had his best days when they were actually struggling, so you can't really say it's him. Um, Gomes was a big part of it. Uh, the, the point I'm trying to make is, as you gave me two names, um, the, 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 <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is, I, I don't even know. It's just it all turned on a dime together. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, Suzuki and Hap, not really, right? It's like, what what really changed from June to now is just everybody together just started hitting outside of Talkman and Bellinger really increasing themselves. Morell's been the same guy he's been all year. If anything, he's been a tad worse. Gomes was good almost the whole season. Um, you know, they've been managed about the same way. I think the bullpen's been better. Starting pitching's been worse. It's just it's just so weird how it's happened. It's really just just a, a massive bulk of offense altogether. And, and Horner, I think, really quietly has turned his year. I don't want to say turn it around. That's too strong, like he was doing terrible. But remember, what, the, the first part of that second half, he was lost for, the, for, for about a week. And then he's really been really solid since. For this type of discussion, Bellinger is for sure the starter. Yeah, no, um, yeah and the you, ender. You had your core of Horner, Swanson, Happ, and Suzuki signed up pretty much entering the season. The latter two uh, we've talked about can raise their game even more, but Horner and Swanson have been a formidable combo up the middle like we thought. You have unexpected seasons from from Gomes and Talkman. Yep. Uh, you need seasons like that in order to be a contending club. I would almost put Morrell in a category of his own, someone that was promoted – uh, about six, seven weeks into the season, has ebbed and flowed, but has mostly been been good. And he's even responded well in, in some clutch moments. Uh, 
your steal is a Cy Young candidate. You sure. had a Cy Young candidate early in, in Strowman. And Steel, though. Steel was really good early, too. Yeah. And a bullpen foursome that has been good for the most and, part. And Fulmer, Merriweather, Leiter, and Alzali. That, and that's Ful- really the group that I look at. And Fulmer's the big one, I think. Fulmer and Tyone are, are the big ones. Although oh, you could argue that Tyone. you could you could argue that Tyone and Strowman kind of canceled each other out, but Fulmer was the guy that cost us a handful of games early, and we said it many times on this show. He's just one of those guys where if they're going to be good, he's got to figure it out. There's no benching of him. There's no DFA of him that makes a whole lot of sense, right? Like he's just he's a talented guy that needs to pitch well. I think his turnaround has been really sneaky to help them out because you know the difference between having three reliable arms and four is is night and day uh in the bullpen but really it, it's come down to the offense and i think i think you can really prove that in the reactions from the fans the first couple of almost the first three games right uh the last game in toronto and then back to back in the Sox till the ninth inning because the fans are like hey we're not hitting and it's like hey i get that but they've been so unbelievable lately. Like it's almost unsustainable to hit like that all the time. And it's like the expectations. I mean, that, that series, that homestand against the Reds and Braves was one of the best offensive homestands, you know, I've ever seen really. I mean, years, they just bashed the ball every game except against freed. And I do wonder for a team built on pitching and defense, right? Was it always, the offense that we're waiting to join the party. Right. And really the breakout of the offense that would be the key to them going to a another level, perhaps. You, um, I I would say yes, because those were the cornerstones of the team. Defensively, I think for the most part, that has stayed uh true. Uh we've we've talked about the rotation struggles, we've talked about the bullpen struggle struggles and now the emergence of those pieces, but I think for this team to separate themselves and 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 after digging a massive hole and now climbing back out of it and, and climbing back out of it maybe with with flying colors, I think it's absolutely what they're doing uh, in the batter's box. And, you know, I, I think you made a good point about the team being built around pitching and defense. I'd like to make a little parallel to, to another team in Chicago, a uh, different sport. This team, oh. they're not as good. But it reminds me in that respect of the 2018 Bears from this perspective. Remember, that was the year that they hired Matt Nagy, and the whole rhetoric was Mitch Trubisky. We got to get the most out of Mitch. We got to get, we got this offensive coach, yada, yada. And really, it was the defense that carried the team, right? Mm -hmm. This team, all offseason, it's kind of been the opposite, but the same idea. Hey, starting pitching, ground balls, defense, defense, that's how we're going to win. And the defense has been good. But really, it's the offense that's been carrying the team. Um, Going into the year, the question marks were, well, there's not enough power here. Is there enough this, enough this? And and by all accounts, they've been a top five offense in baseball. And you go from being 10 under 500 to now there are expectations to to keep winning. Uh, Cubs are currently on an 84-win pace with 42 games remaining. Baseball reference still loves the Cubs and gives – uh, them a 67% chance to make the playoffs. Fangraphs has the Cubs at 53%. Uh, so a lot of baseball to be played still, but this is a team right now that's in a good spot, of course, helped by a dramatic, thrilling, joyful game on, on Wednesday night. Would be a different tone. Uh, and magical moments from Fulmer and Morell. And I, I do think that they're going to keep winning. Of course, this stretch helps. Now there's uh, there's still 10 games left of this 12 game stretch. It's it's kind of a light week in terms of the schedule this week, but um, excited to see where this team goes. And and the Royals have only won 39 games this year. Yeah, and we'll we'll preview them in a minute. But yeah, as well said, it's just you know trying to figure out how this happened, why. And I think I think we're all at the point now where I don't want to say the expectation is to make the playoffs. But I think the the very strong goal, uh, uh, which which one you you feel like you know could easily be attained. Like at this point, if they didn't make the playoffs, 
with their talent right now offensively, it would be you'd be very disappointed. Uh, mm. and, and, and and it's cool that they've put themselves in that position here. And it really it's is. not. And by the way, it's 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 mid to late August now. Yeah, I mean it's the, like this is this is real crunch time. This isn't like hey, yep. it's August fourth. I mean it's August. 18th now yeah and, and yeah. they are they are playing a series probably as you're listening to this or right before you're listening to this where you know you want to win two out of three potentially sweep and, and get to a point where you're you know in the postseason and and to sit here and say that after the entire offseason april the dreadful may mm -hmm. uh, it's um it's a really cool feeling and i'm just I, i'm here to enjoy it i'm excited to um you know, be a part of it. So let's talk about that Royal series coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by sleeper sleeper is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming sleeper has become the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world with over 5 million active users in 2022 alone at sleeper. It's not just about sports. It's about building personal connections and lasting memories. Sleeper is now offering up to 100 times payout for up to eight pick contests. Choose as many as eight players that you like and pick more or less on your favorite baseball stats like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Use promo code Locked On and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions do apply. See terms of use for details. Sleeper is currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today the Cubs play the Royals at 1 20 p.m central Friday and you can listen to every pitch with the Cubs hometown broadcast on Sirius XM on the SXM app search Cubs or tune into channel 844 and catch the Cubs all season long on Sirius XM and before I went to sleep on Wednesday night perhaps it was already early Thursday morning uh, for as much as I really don't care to admit uh, I went back on the app and listened to the Pat Hughes call the whole inning. Oh. And Hughes and Coomer were excellent. I mean, they're excellent every game and, and basically every pitch. Yep. Um, but it was truly special. I actually recorded it on my phone, Sam, if you're interested. Uh, it's about five minutes from, from the morale at bat, it starts through like kind of the post game. So um, I, I saw very the morale cool, very loud. I also heard Len Casper's call of it, and uh, yeah, hearing hit here it was. That's it. That's all I was trying to say. It was so strange, it hearing was. his voice on a call like that in a somber tone, really messed with. I, I listened to it as I was same thing as I was just laying down, and it, it made me almost sit up. And Boog had a good call. And did you ever catch the Benetti call? Because I yes, did not. I did. I did. Okay. It was it was it was pretty funny. I enjoyed okay. it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, all three games this weekend at one twenty. Uh, Tyone against is it Reagan's? Reagan's Reagan's. Regans, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I know he can pitch a little bit. Steele and Singer and Hendricks and Lyles. Reagan's and Singer have pitched well at times this year. Yeah. Reagan's uh, recently has pitched very well. Uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, Sunday starter Lyles has been dreadful. ERA yeah. almost seven. Royals shortstop Bobby Witt Jr. Sam leads their team in every main offensive category. He is turning to a star in his own right, but no one else really pops off the page for them. Nelson Velasquez revenge series. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he had a well, home hopefully run. on an island. Yeah, he had a home run on losing. Thursday. He had a homer Thursday. Um, yeah, I mean it's a, it's one of those series. I mean, you 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 did draw two of their better pitchers, uh, but it's the right. Royals. Uh, you you should win this series. Um, you know, two out of three is a must. Sweeping's probably the goal, and you know you got you got to come out set the tone Friday afternoon. You know, I did watch a little bit of the Royals uh, Mariner series. I like to watch the team the Cubs are going to play. I think they lost three out of four. Um, I know they lost the last three, but I think they played Monday and won. But they, they played them very tough. They scored a lot of runs. A lot of runs. Yeah, they've only won 39 games, but they're 10 and 9 since uh, July 28th. So, and they did have a win streak in there of like six or seven. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And, and they played, like I said, they, they played the Mariners tough. The Mariners had to grind those games um, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, 
so, you know, and it should be a very hitterish weekend. But, you know, the, the key for the Cubs, obviously, would just be to continue to hit. And, and, and you know, Reagan's, I believe, is a lefty. Um, yes. So we'll see that the, the Cubs have been struggling against left-handers here recently. You know, and, and we know we, there's no point to debate. We know what they're going to run out. Talkman's not going to play. Right. It's going to be, you know, wisdom and those guys. Those guys, somebody's got to punish somebody, one of those lefties. Hit a three, four, you know, four-run home run. Um and make it make it worth our while to play these guys because you know if they if they end up scoring two runs or less you know on Friday it'll start to get really eye rolling what they're running out against lefties. What do you think of the role of um, like in a, a magical Amaya and Wisdom for the last forty two games? Yeah, good question. I, think, I I I don't they don't get a lot of playing time. Well, I never understood. I can't. I, I I still am not on the side of how they've handled the Suzuki thing. They 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 benched him and he had one good game and then he became a regular again. I just don't think that that's just not making your point um, at all. And I said magical. I meant Barnhart. Oh, okay. Cause, Barnhart and Mayan wisdom never play. Because I think magical should be playing over Suzuki right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's still I, playing. Kind of regular yeah, PT, but, Suzuki, but not as much. But Suzuki's back to being an everyday guy. Yeah, last weekend in Toronto, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not sure I'm there yet. I, I think I right. like him in a part-time role. Yeah, I mean, the Barnhart thing's odd. Um, he's I here think, to stay, I think. I, yeah, I think, well, yeah, I think he's just an insurance policy. Right. Um, what were the other two names, Wisdom and Amaya who? and Wisdom. Yeah, I think Amaya for Amaya Hendricks. Amaya maybe catching Hendricks, right? Yeah, or, or play, face it a lefty. Yeah, but it's just, I... It, there's not much there. You know, wisdom, wisdom's a weapon in the sense that if you use him correctly in the right matchups, like let's say, you know, last night, for example, with Aaron Bummer pitching a lefty sinker baller and you're down a couple runs and you have, let's say, let's say you're down two runs with a man on first and one out and you have magical yeah. do up. Yeah. I mean, that that's a great spot for wisdom because he's not going to be overwhelmed. He can hit homers. So he'll have some rolls off the bench, but, but not much. I think the, the only real roster debate at this point is, you know, or, or, or playing debates, what they do with Madrigal and, and Suzuki. I, I just yeah, think that's a good one. That, 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 that's really it. So, right. All right. Coming up next, we do have an announcement. Stay tuned. We're back here on Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Right now, shout out to the everydayers You're with us all five episodes throughout the week. And we're well aware there's, uh, some new folks that have checked this out recently. You could be coming every day or by checking us out each and every weekday. Well, I do have an announcement here as uh, due to personal reasons. I'm taking the next two weeks away from Locked On Cubs. The personal reasons are all good things, and I would like to share them. Uh, three things, really, starting a new school year and a brand new school uh, moving and wedding planning. Uh, that absence has been in the works for, for a while. Uh, additionally, though, when I return on Tuesday, September 5th, I will be doing the show only on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So three days per week instead of five. This schedule will be for an indefinite period of time, but for sure uh, through the remainder of the calendar year, save for an occasional pop-in on a Friday show. Uh, I understand this is a significant change, but this is best for me right now. I have been considering these types of changes for most of the summer and have been thoughtful in the decision-making process. It is important to me and feels right. And I know it's the right decision because it's being made independent of the performance of the show and the performance of the Cubs. As of this recording, Wednesday night's episode following – the Cubs walk-off win is already by far the most watched episode in Sam and I's history, and it's trending to be the most listened to episode as well. Whether you consider yourself an everydayer or you recently got here, please stick with us, especially as the Cubs make the push to the playoffs. Uh, when we do reach the revised schedule in September, Sam will be solo on Mondays and Fridays. So you're going to be solo uh, these next two weeks as well as we enter a, a new era for the show. Yeah, I think, um, you know, <clears throat> the, the only thing I would say about this is that, you know, the reason why, you know, we decided to go solo with me versus 
another partner would be that it's it's too first of all it's too important of a part of the season and we've built such a chemistry and a routine that I almost think it wouldn't be fair to whoever came in to try and match it because everyone has their own corks doing this yeah. and their own cadence and their own deliveries and I think we like you said we got a really good thing going right now so while you take you know your couple of weeks off I I, I think I'll be able to hold down the fort um, for sure to where, to where our audience where will still see the same thing you know it's obviously yep. going to be different but but yep. something that they're used to and then you know three days a week is still more than half the shows when you come back mm-hmm. and so um you know and it's all the shows in the off season yep. um yeah true so uh, you know it's not i don't think it's going to be that big of a deal f- for our audience and i just don't think it'd be worth bringing somebody in and as far as you go i mean i don't want to get too much into it because it's your life but you know we- we've been talking about this for a bit um, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think people understand, nor should they, cause there's very few people that record a podcast every day, a, how much time it takes and B, you know, the communication, the, the elite, elite communication that you and I must have for the show to work in terms of show times, recording times and things like that. And I, I you know, we, we have, haven't really had any issues. And I would say, in the last, you know, since we've done the show, so the last 13 plus months, I'm not sure there's been more than like a 36 hour window. We haven't had any communication. Right. Uh, so, you know, it'll be an adjustment on that front, but, um, you know, I, I think everything, I think everything will go well. And I think everyone will understand the decision and, and, you know, we're just, it's, it's business time, right? We're just going to keep churning out wins. That That's all it's about. Yeah. I hope so. I just I want hope to be so. talking about wins. So. And I think you're going to be excellent. Uh, There's been two shows this summer solo, and uh, you've been great. So, uh, I do, I do had uh, was was wondering about the emotions, and um, yeah, yeah, just it's definitely catching me now. So. Yeah, but I think I, I think I think it's going to be like I I don't think I I think these next two weeks will be the hardest part. And then when you come back on a three day a week basis, I don't think it's going to feel that empty. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, no, I think that's going to be, it's still 60%. And that's going to be shows. go time. Right. And that's going to be postseason time and, or postseason, you know, playing for that. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, I, I don't think it's going to be, I think everyone's going to be cool with it. And, uh, and you know, playoff shows are in order pretty soon. Oh, no, those are going to be those are going to be those are going to be insane. But yeah, it's good. I'm crazy. Glad, I'm glad you announced it, and uh, you know, hopefully by the time you come back, I I, I deliver you a nice first place club. <laughs> I think that might happen as soon as next week. Yeah, I hope you're right, Matthew. Because that's what I'm I, feeling right now. Because I feel very sorry for our listeners if this thing goes south and they got to listen to me for ten straight shows. <laughs> Uh, because let me tell you, when you're by yourself, have you done one? You've done a couple by yourself. I've done a couple audio only by myself. When you're yeah. by yourself, it feels like you're talking for hours. <laughs> yeah. It's just because, because it's you, so you, different. You just, you just want, you just literally want to tell yourself to stop talking and you still got 20 minutes to go. And if things are going south and I got to hear myself be negative for 25 minutes a night, every night, hey, you just you know, got to hit 20, dude. Yeah, people will be really turned off by me if they aren't already. So with that, have a great weekend. <laughs> All right. So thankful uh, to Sam. So thankful to, to the audience. And uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button for the algorithm, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast and streaming on Sirius XM. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. I will talk to you very soon And this is Locked On Cubs.